His name has gained notoriety as that of a powerful hunter. He is the son of Cush and the grandson of Ham. His kingdom included Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna and Sinar, also known as Nimrod's homeland. Nimrod, whose name is translated as, He who made all the people rebel against God, in Genesis 10 verse 9, is the archetype of a rebellious people. He is compared to Cush and Amraphel, the latter of whose name is translated as, He whose words are dark. He was the first hunter, so he was also the first to introduce man to eating meat. Additionally, he was the first to wage war on other people. Nimrod wasn't evil in his heart. The animals that he caught while hunting, however, were sacrificed to Yahweh by him when he was a young man. He wore the skin coats that God made for Adam and Eve, Genesis 3 verse 21, which is why he had such great hunting success in Genesis 10 verse 9. These coats were passed down from father to son, coming into Noah's possession as a result. Noah took them into the ark with him, where Ham stole them. When the animals saw Nimrod wearing them, they knelt down in front of him so that he would have no trouble catching them. However, the populace believed that these accomplishments were the result of his extraordinary strength, leading them to crown him king. Another story says that when Nimrod was 18 years old, war broke out between the Japhethites, the Hamites, and his kin. The former were initially in control, but Nimrod, leading a small Kushite army, attacked and overcame them. As a result, he was crowned king of all people on earth, and they named Tura as his minister. After experiencing such great glory, Nimrod changed his attitude toward Yahweh and turned into the most blatant idolater. When Tura told him that Abraham had been born, he asked him to sell the baby so that he could kill him. Tura brought a slave child to Nimrod in place of Abraham, who he had hidden, and Nimrod smashed the baby to pieces. Most people agree that Nimrod was the one who proposed and oversaw the construction of the Tower of Babel. Nimrod built the tower in order to rebel against God, who is said to have made him powerful. The tower is referred to by the rabbis as the House of Nimrod, and is thought to have been an idolatrous home that its owners left behind during a time of peace so that Jews may use it. Nimrod stayed in Shinar and restored his kingdom after the tower's builders were scattered. The Sefer Hayasher claims that he was given the name Amraphel at this point in reference to the demise of his princes during the dispersion. However, according to the Targum of Pseudo-Jonathan, Nimrod left Babylonia before constructing the tower and traveled to Assyria, where he constructed four additional cities, Nineveh, Rehobot, Kala, and Rezin. Nimrod did not alter his behavior as a result of the punishment meted out to the tower's builders. He continued to worship idols. He specifically persecuted Abraham, who was ordered to be thrown into a hot furnace. One theory holds that this is why Nimrod was given the name Amraphel, which is throw in. When Nimrod learned that Abraham had emerged from the furnace unscathed, he decided to stop persecuting the Yahweh worshiper. However, the next night, he had a dream in which a man was emerging from the furnace and moving toward him with a drawn sword. Nimrod then fled, but the man threw an egg at him. This later changed into a sizable river, drowning all of his soldiers with the exception of himself and three of his followers. The river then changed back into an egg, and from that came a small bird that flew at Nimrod and gouged out his eye. The dream was seen as a prophecy of Nimrod's defeat by Abraham. And as a result, Nimrod sent a hit squad to assassinate Abraham, while the latter fled with his family to the land of Canaan. Ten years later, Nimrod arrived to fight Ketelamer, king of Elam, who had been one of Nimrod's generals and who had moved to Elam after the tower builders dispersed to found an independent kingdom there. With the intention of punishing his disobedient general, Nimrod led an army into battle, but the latter annihilated him. Then, Nimrod became a vassal of Ketelamer, who engaged him in the conflict with the rulers of Sodom and Gomorrah, whom Abraham ultimately vanquished. It was said that Esau killed Nimrod because of his own jealousy toward him because of the fact that they were both hunters. There are currently two widely accepted theories about who Nimrod was. The first which was embraced by G. 
Smith and Jeremias, claims that Nimrod should be compared to the Babylonian hero, Isdabar or Gishdabar, in the Gilgamesh. The second, which was advanced by Sais, Pinches, and others, claims that Nimrod should be compared to Marduk, the Babylonian Mercury. The first identification is based on the fact that Isdabar is depicted in the Babylonian Epos as a powerful hunter who is constantly accompanied by four dogs and as the creator of the first major Asian kingdom. Furthermore, Jeremiah perceived the possibility of reading Namra Udu, the shining light, rather than Isdabar, the correct reading of which had not yet been established. This reading would have made the identification with Nimrod almost certain. However, those who link Nimrod to Marduk argue that the name of Isdabar must be read as Gilgamesh, as is now generally accepted, and that the signs that make up the name of Marduk, who is also depicted as a hunter, are read phonetically as Amar Ud, though they can also be read ideographically as Namar Ud, in Hebrew, Nimrod. By interpreting the biblical words to mean that Nimrod was a descendant of Cush, it may be possible to reconcile Marduk, the son of Ea, with the biblical Nimrod, the son of Cush. Other explanations include the idea that Nimrod represents the constellation Orion, and that he represents a tribe rather than a specific person. Nimrod is regarded by Arabs as the pinnacle of tyranny Aljabar. Arabian historians disagree on Nimrod's ancestry to some extent. He built the Tower of Babel and a bridge over the Euphrates, and he ruled the Nabataeans, his kin, for 500 years, according to one authority. He was the son of Mash, the son of Aram, making him a Semite. The consensus, however, holds that he was a Hamite, a son of Canaan the son of Cush or a son of Cush the son of Canaan, Abri provides both. He was born during the reign of Ru, and he was the first to establish fire worship. Another myth claims that there were actually two Nimrods. The first was the son of Cush, and the second was the notorious tyrant who lived during Abraham's lifetime. He was the son of Canaan, making him the great-grandson of the first Nimrod. Masudi claims that the first Babylonian king was Nimrod, who oversaw the construction of numerous canals in Ira during the course of his 60 year. Nimrod is compared to Doc, also known as Sok in Persian by the author of the Tariq Muntab, who was cited by Derbalat in his Bibliotech Oriental. Doc was the first Persian king to rule after the flood. al karizmi however links him to Kai Kaos, the second king of the second Persian dynasty. In the beginning, Nimrod ruled where Baghdad is now with justice. However, Satan perverted him, and he then started to persecute all those who worship God. His chief vizier was Azar, Tura, the father of Abraham. The Mohammedans also tell the stories of Nimrod's persecution of Abraham, who he cast into a furnace, as well as the Midrashic legends of Abraham's birth in which Nimrod is mentioned. The Quran mentions Nimrod chapter 11 verses 68 to 69. Nimrod remarked to Abraham after observing him emerge and scathe from the furnace, Thou hast a powerful God. I wish to offer him hospitality. Abraham informed him that no one's hospitality was required by his God. However, Nimrod had thousands of horned and small cattle, as well as birds and fish, brought, and he had them all sacrificed to God. However, God rejected them. Nimrod, humiliated, barricaded himself inside his palace and forbade anyone from approaching him. Another legend claims that Nimrod challenged Abraham to a duel after the latter emerged from the furnace. Nimrod assembled a sizable army, so when the appointed day arrived, he was shocked to see Abraham by himself. When asked where his army was, Abraham pointed to a gnat swarm that had wiped out Nimrod's army. Nimrod gathered his ministers and told them he would ascend into the heavens and destroy the God of Abraham. After hearing from his ministers that such a journey would be challenging because the heavens are so high, Nimrod came up with the idea of constructing a tall tower as a means of carrying out his mission. Nimrod reached the top of the tower after many years had been spent building it, but he was incredibly dismayed to discover that the heavens were still very far away from him. The tower collapsed the following day with such a loud noise that people fainted from fear, and those who survived lost their speech, 
a reference to the confusion of tongues, which further embarrassed him. Nimrod was unfazed by this setback and devised a different plan to ascend to the heavens. He had a sizable chest built with openings in the top and bottom. Stakes with a piece of flesh on each point were fixed at the chest's four corners. Then, beneath the meat, for large vultures, or, according to another source, for eagles, that had previously fed on flesh were fastened to the stakes. Nimrod entered the chest, accompanied by one of his most devoted viziers, and the four enormous birds flew away, carrying the chest with them. The vizier alternately opened the chest's upper and lower doors so he could look in both directions and determine whether or not he was drawing closer to heaven. Nimrod took his bow and began shooting arrows into the sky as they ascended until they were so high that they had no view in any direction. Gabriel then sent the blood-stained arrows back, giving Nimrod the impression that he had exacted revenge on Abraham's god. After circling in the air for a while, Nimrod descended. His chest hit the ground with such force that the mountains trembled, and the angels believed a divine command had been sent to the earth. In the Quran, 14 verse 47, there is a reference to this event. The mountains tremble as a result of the schemes and schemes of the impious. The fall did not harm Nimrod at all. After these exploits, Nimrod kept up his evil rule. A man-shaped angel appeared to him 400 years later and urged him to repent. But Nimrod proclaimed himself to be the only ruler and challenged God to fight alongside him. Nimrod requested a three-day delay during which time he assembled a sizable army, but this was wiped out by gnat swarms. It is claimed that one of these insects crawled into Nimrod's nose, made its way to his brain, and began to nibble away at it. To relieve suffering in order for the noise to stop the gnat from biting, Nimrod instructed someone to hammer on an anvil. Thank you for your support.